In early October, as the red planet drifted through the inner solar system, something strange happened. A newly discovered interstellar object, cataloged as 3I Atlas, made its closest pass by Mars on October 3rd and 4th, brushing through the orbit of the planet at a distance of roughly 30 million kilometers. For astronomers, this should have been a moment of exhilaration. Every available telescope, from the Perseverance rover's cameras on the Martian surface to the powerful reconnaissance orbiters circling above, had a front row seat to a visitor from another star system. Yet, when the moment arrived, the expected torrent of high-definition imagery never came. Only a handful of blurry frames appeared, processed from Perseverance's navigation cameras, instruments never designed for deep space observation. They showed a faint speck against the Martian horizon, just enough for confirmation and then nothing more. The higher-resolution data from orbit remained absent. NASA officials explained that a government shutdown had forced the furlough of many of the agency's image processing teams, delaying all public releases. To some, it sounded plausible, another casualty of bureaucratic timing, but to others, the silence was deafening. Among those who raised questions was Dr. Michael Sala, a writer and former academic known for exploring the links between geopolitics and the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Sala argued that NASA's behavior fit a long-standing pattern, the deliberate delay or suppression of raw imagery whenever anomalous objects appear in frame. His reasoning leaned on history. In 2001, two alleged whistleblowers, Donna Hare and Carl Wolf, claimed at the Disclosure Project press conference that NASA regularly retouched or scrubbed photographs showing possible artificial structures on the Moon or Mars before archiving them for public view. Those claims were never proven, but they lingered in the cultural imagination. Now, as 3I Atlas glided past Mars and NASA went dark, the old suspicions found new oxygen. For weeks, the agency's data repositories remained still. The European Space Agency broke the silence with a single, low-contrast image from its ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, a grainy dot against black space. What drew attention was not the picture's quality, but what it seemed to lack, a tail. Ordinary comets grow brilliant plumes as solar radiation vaporizes their surface ice. 3I Atlas, despite being close enough to the sun to experience that heating, showed no visible outgassing at all. To many observers, that absence transformed an astronomical curiosity into a mystery. On social media, comparisons spread like wildfire. The object, some claimed, resembled the doomsday machine from Star Trek, a long cylindrical body gliding silently through space. Others recalled Oumuamua, the first interstellar visitor detected in 2017, whose flat, tumbling shape and unexplained acceleration had led even reputable astronomers to wonder if it could be artificial. 3I Atlas seemed to inherit that same unease, magnified by the missing data and the timing of NASA's shutdown. Astronomers studying its orbit noticed another peculiarity. Instead of diving steeply through the solar system like most interstellar debris, 3I Atlas traveled within 5 degrees of the ecliptic, the flat plane where the planets revolve around the Sun. Its course would carry it near several major worlds in sequence, Mars in October, Jupiter by December, and perhaps within range of Saturn's telescope soon after. Statistically, that alignment was extraordinary. A few independent analysts calculated the odds of such a path occurring by chance as vanishingly small, though others cautioned that selective sampling and observational bias could make rare coincidences seem meaningful. Still, the notion took hold. What if the object's motion wasn't random? Theories flourished online, ranging from cautious suggestions of an engineered trajectory, a probe using gravitational assists, to wilder speculations that 3I Atlas was a functioning spacecraft performing a survey of the inner planets. NASA's official line remained conservative. The object's brightness and movement fit the profile of a dense, rocky body, rather than an icy comet, which would explain the missing tail. But that explanation failed to satisfy an audience primed by decades of secrecy, real or perceived. Compounding the doubts was another coincidence. 
Around the same time the Mars encounter occurred, the Juno spacecraft orbiting Jupiter experienced an unexpected camera shutdown. NASA announced that JunoCam had been powered down for maintenance. To conspiracy-minded observers, it looked like a pattern. First, the Mars orbiters, now Juno, each losing visibility just as 3i Atlas entered their fields of view. The logical chain was tenuous, but in an era of online speculation, logic is often secondary to narrative momentum. Within weeks, podcasts, forums, and late-night radio revived an old script, the false flag alien invasion scenario. In this story, popularized by UFO commentators since the 1990s, governments might one day stage a simulated extraterrestrial threat to consolidate power or distract from terrestrial crises. Now, some insisted, 3i Atlas was the rehearsal object, a cosmic pretext being quietly shaped into a public spectacle. NASA's silence in this reading wasn't bureaucratic caution, it was orchestration. Behind the rumors, a quieter scientific debate unfolded. Could an interstellar body truly follow such a near-perfect planetary plane? Computer simulations suggested it was improbable but not impossible. Gravitational interactions during ejection from its home system could flatten an object's path over time. Its lack of a tail likewise might reflect a surface already baked of volatiles during its long interstellar journey. But even these sober explanations acknowledged how unusual 3i Atlas remained, a hybrid somewhere between asteroid and comet, an emissary from regions of the galaxy where planetary chemistry follows different rules. For planetary scientists, the frustrating part wasn't the speculation, it was the data gap. A complete photometric record from Mars orbit could have clarified the object's rotation, composition, and mass. Without it, researchers were left with fragments. A few ground-based observations from Earth, the blurred perseverance frames, and a handful of European images. Every missing hour of data, one astronomer wrote anonymously in an online forum, is a hole in the light curve that can never be filled. The vacuum of information also reopened questions about how space data are shared. Under normal circumstances, NASA releases raw images from most missions within days. During a government shutdown, however, civil servants are legally prohibited from performing that work. Contractors can sometimes fill the gap, but only when funding streams remain active. The 2025 shutdown froze both. In that sense, the blackout was not sinister, but structural, a flaw in how scientific transparency depends on political stability. Yet context rarely survives the online rumor mill. Meanwhile, Dr. Sala advanced a broader narrative. To him, the episode demonstrated how classified programs within the U.S. defense establishment handle true deep space intelligence, keeping the civilian branch of NASA as a kind of public facade. He suggested that the best imagery of 3i Atlas was already secured within restricted databases, perhaps analyzed under the aegis of military space commands rather than research institutions. NASA, he argued in interviews, has become a gatekeeper of information, not a discoverer. NASA officials declined to respond directly to such claims, but veteran mission scientists bristled privately. We're not hiding aliens, one told a journalist off record. We're just under-resourced and over-regulated. Still, the agency's reticence did little to counter the perception of concealment. In the absence of images, the public imagination supplied its own. The object itself, meanwhile, continued on its silent path. Spectral readings from European instruments hinted at a dark metallic surface, reflecting sunlight unevenly. Its brightness varied in a pattern suggesting a slow tumble, perhaps a rotation every 12 to 14 hours. Unlike most comets, it emitted no measurable water vapor, only faint traces of carbon monoxide and carbonyl sulfide, volatile compounds that sublimate at higher temperatures than ice. To planetary chemists, that combination was compelling evidence of a hybrid body, part rock, part refractory ice, forged in the boundary zone between a young star's hot inner disk and its frozen outskirts. Such hybrids, if confirmed, could fill a missing link in planetary formation theory. They would show how materials migrate within stellar nurseries, crossing the divide between heat and cold to seed planets with the ingredients for atmospheres and oceans. For astrophysicists, 3i Atlas offered not a conspiracy, but an opportunity a natural laboratory moving through the solar system at 60 kilometers per second. But opportunities vanish quickly in space. By the time political and institutional machinery restarted, the object had already receded toward Jupiter's orbit, its secrets locked behind the limits of light and distance. The debate over NASA's transparency took on a life of its own. 
commentators pointed to the Juno cam deactivation, the Mars data delay, even the summoning of senior generals to the Pentagon that same week, an unrelated event that rumor chains tied to secret briefings about the object. Each coincidence was woven into an expanding narrative web that blurred the line between skepticism and storytelling. At the center of that web lay a familiar tension, public trust versus institutional control. Space agencies operate at the intersection of science and state. Their instruments are funded by taxpayers, but managed under the same rules that govern defense technology. The data they gather straddle both realms, scientific treasure and potential strategic intelligence. When something unexplained appears, those dual obligations can collide, producing exactly the kind of silence that breeds suspicion. As December approached, independent observatories prepared to track 3I Atlas near Jupiter. Juno's cameras remained dormant, but Earth-based telescopes from Chile to the Canary Islands attempted to pick up the faint glint of reflected sunlight. Preliminary reports suggested the object's brightness was fading faster than expected, as if it were absorbing rather than reflecting light. That observation, too, became fodder for speculation. Meanwhile, public interest ballooned. Television specials asked whether humanity was witnessing the prelude to first contact or simply repeating its own cycles of paranoia. Talk shows resurrected Cold War-era anxieties about hidden knowledge, while podcast hosts invoked Howard's Avi Loeb and his Dark Forest hypothesis, the idea that the galaxy may be filled with cautious civilizations that conceal their presence for fear of predation. If Loeb was right, then perhaps the silence of 3 Eye Atlas was not NASA's doing, but its own. Behind the noise, real scientists worked quietly to piece together what little evidence existed. A joint paper from European and Japanese teams proposed that the object's strange orbit could be the result of gravitational capture within a binary star system before ejection, a cosmic slingshot that flattened its trajectory. Another study, analyzing the meager spectral lines, argued that 3I Atlas might be composed of carbon-rich rock coated in dark organic compounds, giving it the appearance of an inert metallic cylinder. Both explanations fit the available data, though neither could be proven without the missing images. By year's end, as 3I Atlas sped toward the outer planets, attention began to fade. The public moved on, the government reopened, and NASA slowly resumed data releases. When the long-delayed images finally appeared in early January, they showed what many scientists had suspected all along. A dark, irregular object, roughly 50 kilometers long, spinning slowly and shedding almost no material. There was no structure, no lights, no alien craft, only the austere beauty of something ancient and inert. Yet the damage to trust was already done. The Three Eye Atlas episode had revealed less about the object itself than about the fragile ecosystem of modern science communication. In an age where real-time data are expected and delays are read as deceit, even ordinary bureaucracy can look like conspiracy. NASA's temporary silence had created a vacuum that rumor filled effortlessly. By the time facts returned, belief had already taken root. And yet, stripped of the noise, 3 Eye Atlas remains extraordinary. It is a relic from another sun, a messenger bearing the chemistry of alien worlds. Its path, so nearly aligned with our own planetary plane, reminds us how thin the boundary is between our neighborhood and the vast interstellar sea beyond. The controversies it sparked reflect not only curiosity, but also a deeper cultural uncertainty. Who controls our window on the universe, and what happens when that window goes dark? For now, the answers drift with the object itself, outward past Jupiter, shrinking into the cold. Whether 3 Eye Atlas is remembered as the third interstellar visitor or as the spark for another era of suspicion depends on what we choose to see in its silence. Some will always imagine secrets withheld, others will see only the limits of technology and chance. Either way, the story of 3 Eye Atlas, its discovery, its near miss with Mars, its brief eclipse by politics, stands as a reminder that the universe rarely hides its mysteries. We hide them from ourselves.